Let's add the image gallery to our page and uh, we will use CSS Grid to do it. So first let's close this, we don't need it. So we need an element that will hold our gallery. So a div will do. So let's find it here in the library panel and let's drop it after the first paragraph. And close this. So we can see it here in the tree. And now we need some images. And PineGrow has a convenient tool for that. You can go to Page, Insert Photos from Unsplash. And here we have a collection of almost half a million high quality images that we can use for free in our projects. So let's search for pine trees. And let's drag a couple of images to the gallery. And here we have different sizes. So we just take the size that is uh, appropriate for what we need. So let's take small sizes. And let's just drop them into the gallery deal. Let's do a couple more. Of course we could also use uh, local images from our computer. Okay, six, that will be enough for now. And um, if we look at the images, some are uh, oriented in portrait, some in landscape. So it's quite hard to imagine that we can easily arrange them into a good looking gallery. But that's what CSS Grid is for. So let's select the deal element and open the grid editor. And let's make it a bit smaller. And we will create a nested grid. So, you know, body element is already a CSS grid. And now we will create another grid that is placed inside the parent grid. So we can do that, we can nest grids as much as we want. Let's click on create grid and it's quite a mess, right? Look at this. But again, it's not as bad as it looks. And our default grid has three columns in one row. And remember, the grid uh, places items automatically if the position is not set. So the first three images went into these three areas and the fourth image caused the browser to create one additional row, automatic row, and then the fourth, fifth and sixth image went into those. So to better see what's going on, we can hide all images except the first one and we use the height icon in the tree panel to do that here. And this feature hides the element in PineGrow only. It doesn't affect how the page looks outside of PineGrow. Okay, so now only one image is displayed and the image is flowing out of the grid because the row size is set to 100 pixels. So let's change this to auto so it will um, adjust to the content size. But do you notice something strange? You know, all these columns should be equally uh, big, like one fraction. But still the first one here, where the image is, is much larger than the other two. And well, it turns out that fraction unit has a secret. And that is if the content doesn't fit into the area sized with fractions, 
then this area expands to fit the content. So in the case the content doesn't fit into, into the space allocated by the fraction unit, then this space behave just like it would be sized with the auto keyword. And we can try this. If we put this on auto, it remains the same. So let's put it back to one fraction. And the, the area is still bigger than one third of the available area. So what can we do? Um, we need to tell the image that it should only take up the available space. And we'll use uh, CSS for that. But first we need to or organize our CSS structure a bit. Until now, I will take a look at the gallery view. We just put all declarations directly on the style attribute. So if we check the code of this div, we can see here we have style attribute and all our CSS properties are listed there. And that's not really a, a nice way to do it. So it's time to start using uh, proper CSS rules. But in PineGraw, that's also easy. So now the uh, gallery view is selected. And here we have our declarations. And we just click. Uh, let me show you the tooltip. Save element style to CSS rule. And when we press this, it opens up the helper that helps us come up with the correct selector for the new CSS rule. So let's create the rule for the gallery class. So dot gallery. And this class is not yet assigned to the our deal element. So Pingro offers to assign the class gallery to the selected deal element. So it will create the rule for the gallery and it will also assign the class gallery to the selected element. So let's click create. And here it is, our gallery rule. And if we open it, we can see that all declarations from style attribute were copied here. And we'll use this gallery class to target the gallery images with another CSS rule. So let's select the first image. And here we click on these three dots and this, this button um, opens the, again, the, the tool that helps us to make a selector for our new CSS rule. And we use this selector maker to say, okay, let's target all images inside elements with class gallery and let's only target like the the immediate children of the gallery uh, element and we say create and now in the css editor with this rule selected let's go to weight and we put 100 percent and also in height and we put 100 percent but now the image disappeared. And the reason for that is, you know, it, it's kind of catch 22. So here we say, oh, the height of the row should be automatic, should be the same size as the content. But the content says, oh, I should be the same size as the area where I am. So it's kind of undefined and then it becomes zero. So let's go back to using a fixed unit, for example, 100 pixels. And now we see our image, but we have a problem because uh, the image lost uh, its proportions. It's squeezed into this space. And luckily we have object fit property in CSS and object fit defines how images should behave when resized. Uh, it is similar to the background size property. So here we have a couple of values. 
for example, contain, we'll put, we'll make sure that the whole image is displayed in the area. But what we need is color so that the image is cropped and its proportions are uh, retained. And now it's time to unhide the rest of the images. So we can just click here on these icons. And let's add the second grid row. And again, it's 100 pixels, so now all images are visible. Let's add some gap. 10 pixels should be enough. And we have a gallery. Um, but it's not perfect though. See what happens when we resize the page. So the, the height is fixed, so like here the images are rectangular and then here they become um, like uh, por portrait oriented. So it doesn't look so well. And also what if the number of images is not fixed in advance? What if we have only three images or what if we have ten? Because now we we kind of hard coded our grid layout. We said, oh, we have place for six images. We have three columns and two rows. So what, what to do? And we'll take care of this next.